Now, it's interesting. Uh, you, you quote uh, Humphrey as saying that, that, that you had been around for a while. Uh, I, I did the math, and you were a young 42 years old at yeah, that but point. I, right, but, but I've been involved with Stevenson in 52 and 56, and so I have been around a long right. time. Now, I want to tell you a very important thing about Mayor Daley. In um, the late 60s, no, excuse me, in the, it was either 60, we had that dinner I told you about, Mayor Daley, in 67. Somewhere along there, I picked mm -hmm. up the, wor the rumor that Mayor Daley was against the Vietnam War. So I called him and I said, I'd like to see you. I'd like to come over. He said, come on over. I said, Mayor, I heard a rumor that you're against the Vietnam War. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. He said, that is correct. I said, do you mind telling me why? He said, my best friend's son, a Harvard graduate, was in the Army in Vietnam. He was killed. I don't remember. He told me the name. I forgot mm -hmm. the name. He said, why? For what? I said, Mayor, President Johnson needs you very badly. Mm -hmm. He's going to listen to you more than he's going to listen to anybody in the United States. Why don't you call him, tell him you'd like to see him, go to see him, tell him what you just told me. And the mayor stopped a minute and he said, uh, I can't do that. I said, why? He said, what do I know? All I know is what I see in the paper. He said, the mayor gets all these uh, intelligence and all the reports. Uh, I, don't know mm -hmm. him. I don't know anything. I said, mayor, believe me, he'll listen to you. Well, I thought he never went, but Bill and his brother, the mayor, both told me that he did go to see Johnson. Uh -huh. And he did say to him, you should get out. And he specifically said, why don't you create a commission of wise people and they'll tell you to get out and then you can get out. And he did do that and the president didn't, wouldn't listen. Interesting. I think th there's a terrible irony in that. The mayor got blamed in 68 and yet he was with the protesters about the war. It was a real irony. And I wrote a piece about it in the Chicago Tribune and said, this is a good, a good question of loyalty. Mm -hmm. The mayor's idea of loyalty was loyalty to the chief, not to the country, but to mm -hmm. the chief. And that political loyalty should be to the country. You know, there, there are other ironies in, in his life, in other um, oral histories we've had. Uh, I'm interested if you could verify uh, the following or have any recollection. The mayor is associated with the high-rise buildings uh, built by the Chicago Housing Authority, part of the slum clearance movement of that era. Um, it, it, it was asserted that he personally, quietly, favored a different approach. He favored the approach of, of mid to low-rise buildings, but that the federal money during the Johnson administration was for the high-rise buildings. Do you have any knowledge of that I've issue? heard that. I, I, I've heard that, and I've, uh, his sons have told me that, mm -hmm. and uh, I have no personal knowledge of it, but it wouldn't surprise me. Race is another irony, uh, arguably. He, he's associated with you know, an old-fashioned kind of racial politics, but nev nevertheless, he was inclusive in putting his tickets together and so forth. Very much so. He would always be sure that there was a black, that there was a woman, there was a Jew, there was a Catholic, right. there was an Irishman. There were, there were, it was a science to be sure to get a, uh, a, a, a what they called a balanced ticket. Now, when, when did his sons, not just as children, but, it, but, but as uh, young men, first come to your attention? Well, I met them, really, but I never 
really knew them until they were grown up. Um, I remember meeting Richard when he was state's attorney, and I knew, uh, actually the one I know the best is Bill. Mm -hmm. And um, many people are surprised when they learn that Bill is the youngest. Right. Uh, because he, he looks, in many ways, he looks older than the, his, uh, his brothers. Um, but uh, I, I never knew them well. I knew Mrs. Daly. Uh, my friend was Judge Abraham Maravitz, who was very, very close to uh, the Dalys. Um, there was a period at the end of the mayor's life when his sons were, were his inner circle. I remember they were, very, they were very close to him and they worked with him. Do you remember anything from that period? No, I, do, I really don't. I, I, I knew a number of people who were working for the mayor. Again, that well, I knew Tom um, Donovan. Right. And I knew Neil Hardigan and uh, Abe Maravitz. But I did not know the boys when they were, when they were involved. Now, you mentioned Sis Daly, Mrs. Daly. Do you have any particular recollections of her? Well, I remember very well the last time I saw her because when uh, her son was elected mayor, not this last time, but the one before, there was a reception that they have annually the night of the election at the Conrad Hilton Hotel. And I went and uh, uh, Mrs. Daly was there and she was very warm and friendly. Uh, but I think she died not not long after that. And during the years when she was a mother uh, and, a, and a wife, uh, there are stories, for example, that, that she she baked the Irish soda bread every week, and uh, it was sort of a typical middle-class mother, if right, you will. Right, they never moved out of their house. Right. Uh, Were you ever in their house? Never, never in it. Was it more or less... Uh, guarded and a family only kind of place? I think that's right. They tried very hard to keep the family. I think the only person I knew was in the house was Abe Maravitz. Uh, as long as we're talking about Abe Maravitz, tell us a little bit about Abraham Lincoln Maravitz. Abraham Lincoln Maravitz, I knew from the time I was in law school. Uh, and when he became a judge of the circuit court. I went to his swearing in. I remember it very, very well. And Abraham Lincoln Maravitz uh, always told a very funny story about his mother, who believed that Abraham Lincoln was Jewish <laughs> because he was shot in the temple. <laughs> uh, Abraham Lincoln Maravitz and Mayor Richard J. Daley uh, were the closest of friends. I think it went back to the Illinois Senate, I, I believe. I think they were both in at the same time. I'm not sure, but went way, way, way back. And um, he was the one person whom I knew who had the mayor's full confidence and was on the inside. So he was he was a member of the bench who remained a political confidant. Correct. If you will. Correct. Something, uh, something. Until they that, both died. That's right. Uh, right. And of course, Abraham Lincoln Maravitz lived much longer. Yes. Um, but they, they were as close as any two people in politics could be. Mayor had another close friend who turned out to be no good and mm -hmm. he f finally ended up in jail. Uh, that was a um, leading alderman. I'm trying to think of his Talking name. about Thomas Keene? Thomas Keene. And he and the mayor were very close, and finally he was accused and convicted. I don't remember the exact scandal, but uh, the mayor fortunately had had nothing to do with it. Depriving the public of the services of an honest public official was the was the rather inventive charge. Charge, and he, and he ended up going to jail. Right. Now, this is something that 
happened with some regularity, both with regard to the late Mayor Daley and the current Mayor Daley. Uh, they were known for their own honesty, but there were those in the circle, once in a while the close circle, who in fact did get into trouble. Well, and there's always been criticism of the Daley's for tolerating uh, people around them who were um, not, uh, you know, really respected and honest. And I, I, I think that the history of politics, in, and I've often wondered about it because I, I was born and raised in Milwaukee, uh, not in Chicago. Milwaukee politics are so completely opposite to uh, right. people can get thrown out of office if they use the office telephone for a personal call. Right. This is, this is uh, a completely different world. And you wonder why that is. I've never figured out why. Right. Uh, have I asked any questions, have I failed to ask any questions about Mayor Daley that I should have asked? The, um, the due diligence question, if you will. What, what have I forgotten to ask? Well, I think the big, the big thing is uh, what, what did Daley leave behind? I would say what he left is a city in better shape, mm -hmm. much better shape than when he found it and then when he got the responsibility. That is not true of most cities today. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't we take a break at this point? Because I think that discussion is now over. And if, if you s still have time, why don't we just stretch for a minute or two? If you still have time, I'd like to yeah, I can do go it. on to uh, elements of your own uh, life that don't involve Mayor Daley. If right. there's anything else, and if there's anything else on Mayor Daley that you'd like to say, uh, well, I will. I would only say this: if, we're if, still if, running. If the okay. mayor was here today, Mayor Richard J. Daley, and you told him that a Chicagoan named Barack Obama who was African-American, was the President of the United States, Mayor Daley wouldn't believe you. And that's sort of an indication of how the world has changed in a uh, period of, uh, of a generation. But I imagine there would be pride. He'd be very proud, but he also would be shocked. Right. And, uh, Thank you. Okay, why don't we take a short break?